Coming up, from sledding to search and rescue, this Malamute's had a career change. Commanding respect from a herd of unruly sheep and assisting stroke victims with patience and play. Kays is a search and rescue dog just outside San Francisco, land of earthquakes. When disaster strikes, Kays has to be ready. Ongoing training keeps him sharp. Because we live in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, we, get, we do a lot of urban searches where we may search homes, abandoned buildings, uh, rubble piles, collapsed buildings, those type of uh, structures. Having Kays as a search dog is kind of unusual because Kays is an Alaskan Malamute. He's five years old. Kays is actually the only Alaskan Malamute in the state of California that's certified. And I believe there, he's only one of five in the entire United States. A squeaky ball is Kays' reward for a job well done. Alaskan Malamutes are built for cold weather, so the California heat is a real challenge for Kays. Good job, Kays. Good job. One of Kays' biggest challenge is handling the heat in here in Northern California. The issue that we have with uh, some of the summer heat is that he has a double coat, and that double coat makes it really difficult for him to work. I've done some things to help him. I've installed fans in the back of my vehicle to circulate air. When Kays' orange coat comes off, it signals to him that work is finished and it's time for play. Kays started out as uh, a sled dog and he was surrendered to an animal rescue group that I used to work with. I was fostering Kays at that time and I was considering looking for a new lead dog for my sled team. And I tried Kays out on the, as the lead dog, and he picked things up so quickly that I wanted to find other things for him to do. And it happened to be search and rescue. Malamutes are pack-oriented, and Kays loves to be with Daryl Lee's daughters and the other family dogs. OK, ask your dogs to shake your hands. Shake, shake. My daughters do a lot of obedience work with Kays and, and the rest of our dogs. Um, they do a lot of uh, obedience training and agility work and, and just playing around the yard with the dogs. He has big teeth. Yeah. Other side. He's uh, very good with children. He, he lets them pull his hair, pull his ears. Uh, he's just a very uh, good dog with children. Uh, he doesn't bark at them, uh, but he does howl. Okay, he's, It's common for search and rescue dogs to go their entire careers without making a find, let alone a live one. Case was very fortunate. On his second search, he, he made his first find. Uh, the subject was a, uh, a young woman in, in her mid-20s who felt despondent and was supposedly trying to commit suicide. When we got to search base, we got our search assignment and our map, and we drove uh, the vehicle over to our search area. And we parked our vehicle there. I got Kay suited up to go out, to grab my search gear. And uh, then we started to uh, take a look at the area that we were supposed to search. We crossed over a small traffic bridge, and I released Kay to begin searching. And I was checking our location. And, and Kay ran out underneath the bridge. And I thought he was going to go splash around the water and get wet or get something to drink. Kay, he's here. Boy. Come on, let's go find her. And as, I, as he was doing that, he came back and alerted to me, which really got my heart pounding because I knew that there was something down there at this point. And so I asked Case to show me, and he brought me down to where our subject was found. Search base. We've located our subject. We are under the bridge on Manzanita Drive. 
If Kay's had not found her uh, probably within an hour, uh, she wouldn't have been around anymore. Uh, it was a very close call. She was in the coma for several days, uh, but she survived the coma, and uh, she's, uh, she's fine now. Oh, let's go to work, Case. Come on. As members of the California Search Dog Rescue Association, Case and Daryl are on call 24 hours a day. Boy, Case, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's a big search. All the rescue teams from the county have been mobilized. Daryl, we're looking for an Asian male. He's about 60 years old. We need to start at the footbridge and proceed through the culvert and search 400 yards on both sides of this trail as a hasty search. OK, great. You Thank it. you. Hayes isn't a tracking dog who smells the ground looking for clues to the missing person. He smells the air. Oh boy. Let's go get him. Let's find him. Hayes does a type of uh, searching called air scenting, and uh, how that works is that uh, he will find any humans in a particular area. Find him. Come on. Hayes and Daryl typically search for Alzheimer patients, missing children, and overdue hikers. Good boy, let's go, come on. The search started fairly late, and night is falling. Unfazed, Hayes and Daryl keep going. Let's go. Hayes and Daryl search through the night with no success. A witness's report put the missing person far from their search area. So the next morning, they fly to the new location. Because of the heat, long search and rescue missions are hard on Kays, so he cools down whenever he can. However, because he's a Malamute, Kays has an advantage over all the other search dogs. Alaskan Malamutes are, are known for their strength and stamina, and Kays can work, you know, all day long. It looks like Kays smells something. Good boy. Good boy, Kay. You this found him. was only a training exercise, but for search and rescue dogs, all searches are real. Search base. We've located our subject and are awaiting instructions. To Kay's, I don't think he really cares whether or not uh, the, the searches that we do in training or in real life. Uh, to him, there's not really a difference. Uh, what drives him is, is, is finding the subject so he can get this little ball that he loves to squeak and chew on and bite. He does all the searching for this toy. Hungary is a bustling modern European city. But outside the capital, the pace is slower. The job of shepherd has remained unchanged for hundreds of years. Well, relatively unchanged. 
Hello, tessék! Szia, kisfiam! Mi a baj? Hopsi, a Hungarian pumi, tends her flock of 60 sheep with her shepherd, Gobi Patko. Hopsi faces daily challenges with the sheep. She must keep them away from the road at the end of the pasture, off the gravel road that leads to neighboring farms, and out of the cornfield. Hatsi rules the sheep, but takes her cues from Gobi. With 60 sheep, Hatsi's flock is small, but that doesn't make the job easy. In fact, it's the opposite. There's less of a herd mentality, and the sheep act as individuals with minds of their own. Well done, Hatsi. I'll close the door, then we'll check to see if there are any sheep left out there. Hatsi has no trouble rounding up the rogue sheep. Pumis make good herding dogs because they can run extremely fast, and it's a lesson that the sheep are bound to remember. While some sheep dogs use a steely stare to herd sheep, Pumis draw on their spark plug personalities, using plenty of barking, and if necessary, a well-placed bite or two. Hopsi grabs them in order to increase their respect towards her. Those dogs that only bark don't have enough respect from the sheep, so she has to bite them to have enough authority. Hatsi was born to herd, and she has her mother Fruji to thank for that. Hatsi's mother, Fuji, is one of the best Pumi bitches in the country. She's won a huge number of breed championships, and she's practically won everything possible, both inside and outside the country. Unfortunately, Fuji's stellar herding career came to an abrupt end when her wet nose made contact with this electric fence. Ever since, she's refused to leave the yard to go to work. Gobi takes special care that Hatsi, her champion in training, stays clear of the fence. At the end of Hatsi's long day, Fruji joins her in a cool swim in the nearby lake. Tomorrow is an important day in Hatsi's life, She's competing in Hungary's National Herding Championship for the very first time. Will she follow in her mother's footsteps? Fine, my dog. It was a very good day today. I hope tomorrow will be just as good. You were very clever today, and I love you so much. Dog owners from all over Hungary attend the National Herding Championship. The event includes obedience, agility, and herding. The dogs attending are typical Hungarian breeds. The Moody, Puli, and Pumis like Hatsi. Because these Hungarian herding breeds are small, their appearance alone isn't enough to scare the sheep into submission. They rely on lots of barking, their intelligence, and instructions from their shepherds to outwit the sheep. These animals are the same kinds of national treasures as objects kept in museums. Yosef Arkoshi, the event organizer, is very proud of Hungary's breeds. He wishes to maintain their herding instincts with competitions like this. The dogs and their shepherds are ready. The course consists of a series of obstacles around which the dogs must herd the sheep. 
The judge gives points based on the dog's overall performance. Not only does the dog get points for each obstacle, but also for how well the dog does his job and how good the communication is between the dog and the owner. I think Hatsi will do all she can in order to perform well. I will try my best. So I hope both of us will do well. I really cannot tell the result. Dio is here. She's a pretty good dog and a very good opponent. So we'll see. I always have competition fright, always. I believe Hatsi feels there's something happening here. It's different than our everyday work that she's accustomed to. She feels I'm anxious, so she's also a bit nervous. Dio, the returning champion, did very well. Hatsi has her work cut out for her. It's a very challenging course. Hatsi is working hard. The course was really hard, but it was pretty good. I think Hatsi completed the course faultlessly. She's never competed on such a difficult course, and I'm very proud of her. It's time to announce the winners. Dio takes first. Hatsi wins a very respectable second place. Some gourmet kibble for Hatsi and a trophy for Gobi. I am happy for the second prize. It was a very good competition on a difficult course. I have to train Hatsi further, so in the next competition, she will do better. Hatsi has a whole year to train for the next national championship. This year's festival ends with a celebration, complete with traditional costumes, music, and dance. always count on a retriever to bring something back. <laughs> Careful, watch those ducks, Poggin. <laughs> They're scary dudes. <laughs> Poggin is a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. You're a good swimmer. Come on, Poggin, let's go. This breed's original job was to lure ducks into firing range for hunters and to retrieve them once they'd been hit. Instead of using his considerable oh, charms to attract ducks, Poggin uses his skills to help draw people out of their shells. <laughs> Poggin is a professional co-speech therapist with his own business card to prove it. He's the first and only dog recognized by the National Speech and Language Association. Every Friday, he does his rounds at the rehabilitation center with his owner, on, Julianne Labreche, a speech therapist. Poggin's duck is kind of like his security blanket. He likes to bring it wherever he goes. He, uh, he's always liked his duck, and so we always bring it to therapy every week. And uh, we play with it, and the patients play with it, and 
Sometimes, though, he, um, the squeakers go, so I have to keep buying him new ducks. He likes to kill these ducks. <laughs> Julianne's patients are stroke victims who have difficulty not only speaking, but with reading and writing too. Sometimes we talk about um, a language problem um, connected with a stroke, like waking up and suddenly your language is all mixed up. It's like you're in a new country where you suddenly don't understand the language. Show me his back. No, not quite. Not Hagen, quite. he motivates the patients. He gives them something to look forward to. What? Um, he calms them down uh, because they're often very tense. He cheers them up and he puts them in the mood to want to talk because sometimes my patients are very sad. They don't want to communicate and he is great that way. Is this dog friendly? Yes. He is. He's a pretty friendly guy. He takes his work very seriously, but he also takes his play very seriously. He loves to play. You want to play volleyball? You want to play volleyball? Are you ready? Are you ready? Go, 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 well, Poggin. Uh, can you open it up? What's in there, Poggin? Oh, wow, a new duck. A new duck. <laughs> oh, just. <laughs> Richard, that was so nice of you. Thank you very, very much. Richard and I have done a lot of work around his voice, and uh, Poggin's been a big, big help. Right. Good work. That's great. Good work. Good work, Richard, and good work, Poggin. He was recognized uh, for his efforts, and he now has what we call permanent part-time status. He's a permanent uh, part-time employee here at the rehab center, but of course he doesn't get paid. He, he just gets dog biscuits. <laughs> Let's go. Cool.